All right, everyone, it appears that the Democrats are beginning to suffer a nervous breakdown over what's happening in Gaza. Of course, you've had a number of locations that have been bombed. Uh, they're marked uh, for refugees. You've had a number of journalists killed. They're not all being killed, by the way, by Hamas. Um, now, the other day, you had an ambulance get hit, and uh, something like 15 people died. A bunch of people were injured, and Israel said, yeah, we hit the ambulance. There was a Hamas leader in it, so we decided to blow the ambulance up. Sorry about the collateral damage, but they all look the same to us. It's interesting how that's beginning to take a toll as far as the PR campaign goes, uh, which I warned of. Disclaimer again for anyone who's still confused about this. Not Team Palestine or Team Israel. I see it as I don't have skin in the game, but I, I suspected that the optical war would be lost by Israel in fairly short order. Indeed, that's already beginning to happen. The problem is the Dems are looking at the polling with regards to this. And they always judge, they always uh, uh, take action based on polls. So like uh, with gay marriage, for example. The Democratic Party opposed gay marriage and waffled on the issue and set itself aside as the respectable, respectable middle ground party on the issue for many decades and said, well, I won't call it marriage. It's, it's, I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman only because I'm a church-going Christian. But civil unions are okay, or, or something to that uh, extent. This was Obama. This was how Biden operated, although actually he was a later tater. He, he came around less, uh, later than most of the Dems. Hillary Clinton, you know, in their Senate race, of course, when asked by students there when running in New York, she said she wasn't in favor of gay marriage either. No, I would not legalize gay marriage. Of course, now they pretend like they were always very progressive and have deep-seated roots on the issue. None of them do. Uh, the log cabin Republicans have more deep-seated long-term views on the issue of gay rights. They're doing the same with, with Gaza, and it's, it's beginning to hurt them. Rashida Tlaib comes out the other day, slam a jamas Joe Biden, uh, calls for an immediate ceasefire and tells Biden no uncertain terms, according to her opinion, which really means her constituency, and therein lies the problem. We'll investigate a little bit further. According to her constituents, we shouldn't be gung-ho for Israel. Nancy Pelosi came out and said that a ceasefire would be a gift to Hamas. Clinton has echoed the same sentiment fairly recently as well. Biden has come out and he and his team are calling for a ceasefire. So you have this plethora of views and Biden is trying to walk a tightrope. I love Israel, but we need a ceasefire. The neolibs are saying, let Israel curb stomp them. Effectively, just yeah, kill them all. The leftoids, on the other hand, are saying ceasefire now at all hazards, civilians are dying. You, it's the tale of three different stories because it's the tale of three different types of constituencies. Joe Biden is a national level politician. Pelosi and, and Tlaib and AOC and the others, these are people in Congress. We need to understand that a member of the House, especially, is, uh, is automatically more likely than somebody else to defy their own national party simply because they have a constituency to mind. Senators also operate in a similar capacity. Otherwise, you get Joe Manchin. You get an individual who's a, who was a fairly popular incumbent representing a state, is capable of doing so despite the state by and large being members of the other party because they're willing to tolerate you. They feel like ideologically you're in line enough. Uh, nobody has come out of the woodwork to, to mount a significant challenge. He's probably going to lose his job. He may be the no-labeler candidate or something like that. He's probably going to lose his job. Why? Because he went behind the backs of the people of West Virginia to parlay with Biden while pretending he wasn't parlaying with him at all, and then signed on to Biden's bill, then confusingly afterwards denounced it. That didn't work so well, now did it? It's almost like hey, he's like older, so maybe he just said fuck it and said, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to seek re-election anyway, who cares? But apparently he is, and I, I don't know. Um, Manchin has some, some positive aspects, but he's not necessarily a strategic genius. He basically fucked himself. Nobody else had to do it for him. And the Dems are melting down because members of Congress, some of them are from like really far-flung blue districts. Those people, there's a significant amount of overlap. Younger demographics, more diverse demographics, richer demographics. Of course, you know, the limousine liberal crowd, the nimbiusts. Uh, more likely, and the, the gated community college kids are more likely to be flying a Palestinian than an Israeli flag, for example. 
Pelosi doesn't give a fuck anymore, and confusingly is taking up her neoliberal, sort of more war-hawking line. Biden has to straddle, though, which indicates he's seeking re-election. For people who think that he's going to kick himself aside and, and recuse himself from running again, and it'll be Newsom 24 out of nowhere or something like that, or maybe Jeb, he registers a Dem at any time, considering his views. Uh, and the views of the Democratic Party as they uh, begin to deviate from the long-term norm as well. The problem for Biden is that he has to appease these bipolar aspects of the Democratic Party and they can't agree on the issue. Because this is a very bipolar issue now, isn't it? Ultimately, at the end of the day, you have two groups of people dedicated openly to wiping one another off the face of the earth. <laughs> so, when, when Hamas's deputy leader comes out and says, yeah, our goal is to eradicate the Jews. We, were from, we want to kick him out of the entire area. Well, I mean, that is per fairly clear what their goal is. Um, there's not a lot of confusion. Some people try to read between the lines, like, well, that's not really what they mean. Okay, that's sort of like when, when leftist media was iterating what the Ayatollah, what the fucking, uh, that bullshit artist in Iran said. He's like, well, when we say that, uh, that uh, death to America, it's actually, it's not quite what we mean. I think it's quite clear what you mean. There's no real other way to interpret it. When Israel says that they intend to effectively occupy an annex part of Gaza in order to crush Hamas, and the methodology by which they're doing that is, well, they're using human shields, so literally everything is a target. Okay, so you intend to massacre people. You intend a massacre. Even if, it's, even, even if the average soldier in Israel is like, yeah, I'd rather not shoot the civilian dude. So if a Hamas member, you know, suddenly puts somebody in front of them, you're just going to shoot through them, I suppose. Well, it's a legit target. It's Hamas. Collateral damage be damned, apparently. Most of the people who have died in Gaza are not Hamas members. Just like the average Israeli that got killed by the uh, Hamas members coming across the border with paragliders and massacring them, they were civilians. So in, in other words, I look at it, and I say stay the hell out. The U.S. shouldn't even bother pushing for a ceasefire. This area has become so inflamed, and after a long time has become so in incapable of any real working solution that involves a civilized power brokering it, that there's nothing to do but stand aside and watch with awe as people kill each other. I hate to tell you, but it's not possible for the United States to make sure that everyone in the world can live with dignity and in peace and there's no more wars. So, dude, we can't even control our own fucking border because of this incompetent administration. How the hell are we supposed to secure Israel's borders or provide aid for the people of Palestine? Let private mercs and private aid groups go in, take their risks when they do, and we back the fuck off. But the Democrats are not cerebral enough to simply tell people that that's probably what we should do. No, it's got to be all political. The problem is, when the polling is right down the middle, you end up with Democrats in blue-leaning districts saying, Hail Palestine. Democrats in not-so-safe districts, or part of the true old guard establishment like a Pelosi, or they're not in power, saying, no, just have a ceasefire. And then you have the Biden administration I mean, that you don't have a ceasefire, you know, hail Israel. And then you have the Biden administration saying, well, if everyone could just calm down here, why can't we all be friends? He sounds like goddamn Yoko Ono. That's clearly not going to happen. Considering the number of people killed on both sides of the border, there may not be peace for a very long time there. And But you think about what peace means in the context of this entire region. Not just Israel and Palestine, Lebanon and, and areas attendant. Until you get into Egypt, there's been no peace for a very long time that isn't basically, it's seemingly calm. We're just waiting for the next massacre. We're waiting for the next invasion. We're waiting until we invade someone. It's a waiting game. I'm farming my olives peacefully. I wonder when I'm going to have to grab my AR or my AK the next time. Again, it depends on which side of the border you're on to an extent. I wonder when I'm going to have to grab my hand grenades and put on daddy's body armor because, you know, it's an intergenerational war at this point. And the Dems don't know what the fuck they're doing. By the way, can you ever imagine the U.S. response to this being so scatterbrained and inept under Donald Trump? Uh, no, I, I don't think that war would have broken out in the first place. I think if fighting had broken out, probably there'd already be a diplomatic solution right now if Donald Trump were president. Look at what he did in North Korea. Again, he failed on making sort of a, 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 a two-state solution thing happen, uh, but uh, he got the Abraham Accords, 
etc. He managed to <laughs> move the officially recognized capital uh, um, of Israel uh, without causing a war. Because people were fucking afraid to do shit like this when he was the president of the United States. Nobody fears Biden. Unless they have to be near him when he's had his bran muffin. That's about all. Peace out.